I'm Dana Haas, the Water Conservation Administrator at the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission. I think most most large agencies in the states, agency like us, LA, San Diego, Marin, East Bay Mud, were um, using less water per. We're using less water total than we did in the 80s, even though our populations have gone up. And this is kind of mostly due to like plumbing code changes. So there's new standards for toilets and shower heads, and that have really cut these big users in half. So compared to kind of 20, 30 years ago with all the new conservation programs and these standards, yeah, I think we're, we're more efficient than we used to be. We're really a customer service program and it wasn't attached to supply, the water supply planning, to right now we're in water resources planning. I think we're a good model for some things. I think other agencies have surpassed us in, other, in, in certain programs and we've kind of taken the lead on certain programs. Just our geographic situation makes us, you know, by default we start low. Again, because we don't have lawns, we're not really hot, we're, you know, we're just really dense and urban. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, but I do think, you know, we've started programs that are pretty um, um, creative. You know, we've started pay, we started an incentive program that's based on how much people save. So um, we pay for kind of water savings. Um, there's like a big statewide campaign. Have you heard of Flex Your Power? Everyone has, you know, and like while you've heard of Water Saving Hero, not everyone has. But Flex Your Power has those TV ads, and I do think that a certain baseline needs to exist, and we haven't had that. Well, also, you have to think that for power, there's how many, there's PG&E, San Diego, there's like three or four power agencies. There's over 300 water utilities, you know. So again, a lot harder to get them on the same page. One of the challenges was that San Francisco's message wasn't the same as Santa Clara's, wasn't the same as East Bay Mud, but the state is trying to do a like statewide campaign and they just started it this year, so I'll wait and see how that goes. But we've given away like, you know, probably like a million dollars this year worth of incentives, probably the same last year. Um, I remember when uh, LADWP, LA hit their two million toilets, like that was, you know, a good eight years ago in terms of rebates or something. It makes a huge difference because you think of something like toilets, it's the largest user in the house, mm -hmm. you know, and um, so if you can get those things out where you can get a seven gallon and replace it with a 1.6 or 1.2, it just by default saves so much water so easily. Although, you know, if people just fix their leaks, that would be nice. <laughs> it would save at least as much, I think. Financial incentives, which you were mentioning, and then um, those we give for things like toilets, and we only give for the highest efficiency. Toilets and washers, um, and then we give away things like shower heads and aerators and other little fixtures. And the other kind of big program we have in, in financial incentive is that we pay for performance. So we do, for example, we went, there's a big um, tofu plant out in Potrero and so, and that they also grow sprouts. So we took their whole sprout growing system. They used to kind of grow the sprouts, no, water the sprouts and then dump the water and the water would kind of dump out to the sewer, which you know, the sewer group wasn't happy about either. But so now what we do is we, they apply the water, they grow it, we built a couple of tanks to capture that water, kind of clean it, filter it, and then just reapply it. So I think we capture 80% um, now. I mean, you always lose a little bit, but um, so that was kind of, and so we, that was a big program. That was, you know, I think that was like a $200,000 project because you had to build the tanks and the filtration and it took a long time. Um, and so we gave financial incentives to them. I think we mitigated, I don't know, 20, 25% of that project. In the Fairmont Hotel, we changed out all their ice machines from water cooled to air cooled. So we gave them, that fell under that financial incentive program. So it's projects that are a little less, they're not just toilets or shower heads or washers, they're a little more different and we have to measure them. And so we do, we have a program for that. So that's kind of our financial incentive program. Then we have the technical support. So we have a couple of auditors that will go to your house or business or you know wherever, any customer in the city and kind of do a walkthrough and find leaks and recommend where to do improvements. And we find that saves 
a ton of water and money for the customers. They're usually really happy. Our parks, we're working with them to do a parks plan and how to be more efficient in the parks and what kind of irrigation and all those kind of things. And kind of for some of the bigger places like the schools or whatever, kind of, you know, more technical, technical support. Um, so that's our technical support program, kind of this, these outreach programs, you know, the, we did the Water Saving Hero, but we also do it internally and we reach out to our customers and we send them, you know, mailings and their bills and, and, you know, one of our problems is we can't reach our renters because they don't get bills. So we kind of have outreach programs for them and kits that we could give them. We haven't declared a drought. The, the governor declared a drought. Um, on the second year, in the middle of the kind of the second or third dry year, depending on where you're at. Um, but we never declared a drought. We went to voluntary rationing, voluntary 10% cutbacks. That's what we asked our customers. We got, I think, 12. No one would agree on the word drought because we hadn't declared it. Because if you declare it, it's a pretty serious thing. We get our water from a different supply source. And every, that's kind of the interesting thing about water compared to power or something like that, is that every agency could be in a completely different situation. And now, you know, there's a governor's push to um, pass legislation that cuts water use 20% by 2020. So we're look they're looking at all kinds of different things. But I think in terms of this kind of drought emergency, um, you know, we didn't declare it. We got what we wanted. Other agencies had different levels of success. I think, you know, people live here and people have chosen to live here and they use water, they can use water efficiently. And, you know, I don't, I, I don't see this apocalyptic scenario yet. And um, I don't, you know, believe in restricting growth or anything like that. I think there are really smart ways to do it. And I think there's still a lot of like potential for using water and all resources more efficiently. I mean, it's a possibility. It's something that's, you know, come up since it's, since it's been built. Yeah. I mean, as a, as a like, Public servant, I kind of feel like that's a public issue. Um, you have to get all the information out there. And then, you know, there was a study, was a couple years ago that said it, it'll range from like, the cost will range from three to 10 billion. We have a very clean water source. We don't, we have filtration exemptions. We have, a, you know, we're just really lucky here. Um, so do we want to, that's one of the things that we'd have to, um, to some degree give up some of the clean power that we're creating that, you know, Taking out the dam will be a mess in itself. So there's there's all kinds of issues. We had a goal of like 10 million gallons a day, I think 10.4, something like that, by 2030. Mm -hmm. And we just kind of um, adjusted to hit it by more or less to hit it 10 years earlier. Things come up, so you adjust. So we had goals, we just kind of made them quicker. Every, every building, every commercial building in the city has to be retrofit either on major improvement or by 2017, which is huge, because you can have like seven gallon toilets in there. So it's, you know, it took years of work actually, but we passed that last month. So, yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, so those kind of, that's kind of how we approach things. Those are our programs. Like some of the public sees like these, you know, rebate programs and outreach programs, and some is kind of more behind the scenes to either inform or to make it just run better. I, again, and I, I, I don't see it in this apocalyptic way, but I would like, you know, people to um, kind of internalize or feel about water like they do about energy, like it, that it's, it, that they're that aware of their uses and what is necessary and what is not, and just start living here like we do live in a dry state, and droughts will happen. It doesn't matter. Even if we're efficient, it'll not rain for a while. You know, that's, that's the thing. That's the difference, again, between water and energy. You can, uh, you can flex your power and ask everyone to not do, run the dryer, and then the next day it'll bounce back. But we can ask people, and we don't know that it's going to rain for another three years. So there's not that kind of immediate gratification that you can get. Hopefully the state works on, starts getting the message out that we're always going to be in this situation and we need to think about it.